It's early morning. We're heading off to French Lake. I metal detected in this area. This is downtown of the ghost town or semi ghost town metal lake. We also were on top of that butte. It's over here. Well, that's not the butte, but the butte's near it. Main Street's right up here. Of course, not much remains, but like I said, I was metal detecting, and I found nails, glass. You could tell, you could tell there was a town up here at Metal Lake. And how you head out of here is you make a a right, because this is Main Street right here, and then you have a bunch of cross streets. Beautiful day. Lake's looking ever so lovely. It's been quite a jaunt. We went to the historic cemetery up on the hill. It's up on the hill. Metal detected at the ghost town. Climbed Hartley Butte. Learned some history about him being murdered. Went out to Fordyce Lake. It's been a full trip. Non-stop going, that's for sure. A little post there. Well, we're going to go ahead and we'll climb up on this road and we'll head up the trail. We're on day three of exp our expedition. Have not found any Bigfoot tracks. Not to say that Bigfoot does not exist up here. But the area gets a lot of traffic. It's a beautiful area. A lot of people come up here to camp and fish hike. You don't see too many backpackers. It's kind of lonely country, but they are up here. You can go boating. Enjoy the history. I've tried to soak up the whole area for everything it's worth. And my dog, he's not feeling too good. Hurt his leg. His... He's just not in the mood to... He's not really in the mood to do any hiking right now. Limping. Shaken, tired, can barely stand, which is strange because I've taken him on mountain climbs for days and yesterday just wore him out. He is just like, I am not going anywhere. So I have my girlfriend's dog, his name's Rocky. He does do a few hikes. The good thing about Rocky is he can hear and see very well, and so it helps to have him on an investigation because, as far as Bigfoot goes, he's gonna he, he'll find a track if. They, those creatures stink, so it's quite possible that he might be a very big asset to us. We got about .4 more miles to go, and then we take the trail over. It's not a very long trail. It is a primitive trail, but we'll cut over the lake. If we lose the trail, we just keep cutting over, then, and we'll hit it. Right now, we're at the southern shore actually western shoreline of French Lake. It's in the woods about a half mile to our left. Of course you can't see it. <laughs> Cemetery's up here on the hill. Right up there. Deeper in the woods. That overlooks town. You can see Glacier carved rock formations, granite slabs, just rippling. Look at that. You can see that. Yeah, it's coming right up. Might might be to the left here. It's also possible that we might be able to take a dirt road up to the lake. Just depends on how bad it is. If we get to the lake quickly, we'll have time for horseshoes. This is very fast. Oh. No, that's not it. That's a road. The trail's up here. Of course, that road will head, probably head to the lake. I don't know. A lot of these were old city streets back when this was a town. If you go in the woods down some of these roads, I went last night, there's big open areas where houses and buildings and structures once sat. 
We're about 200 feet from the trail up here. And then we'll take it to the trail and head out to French Lake. See the beautiful English peak, which overshadows it. And it's coming right up. I seen a sign for the trail, but people like to rip things up and tear things apart and vandalize. So we may not even see it marked. Very thick woods, very creepy woods. Tahoe National Forest is some of the most interesting forest I ever been to in my life. It shows a trail right up here, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah, see, there's a ridge right there where the lake is. Just got to figure out how to get over there. Should be right to our left. Right here. This is it. Maybe we can drive to this place. And then we'll have more time to search for Bigfoot tracks. Or at least park back here and get close enough. Fields of granite rocks. Oh yeah, this is the one. And it goes left and it goes right. We'll probably go to our right because then it goes right and then it turns left. Either way, the lake's just over here. You can see a big open basin around the corner. That's where the lake is. It's not too bad. Whoa. Yeah. Can't take it any further. We'll have to park here. I can see where the lake is down there, though. Not too bad. Let me see how many miles we got from where we're at. Oh, that's short. About a mile. All right, let's take it to the trails, boys. French Lake. We're heading down the trail. This used to be an old, old OHV road or whatever, but the gates are bent and down, and this will take us right to the lake. It's going to be a little bit rugged. I heard some stories that this is a real rugged trail. But the lake is not that far. It really isn't. Within a mile, we'll be there. And we'll spend a little time looking for some tracks, taking some photos, and then we'll head back to camp. Got some sausages cooking, some macaroni and potato salad, play some games, pack it up, and head head home do the long dirt mile the long dirt roads for 20 miles to get out of here before we even see any pavement and even then it's still pretty remote it's just a bunch of back roads cool cool Got a bunch of volcanic vents and domes back here. This should be a nice little hike. This is not a major, a major expedition we're doing. There is also English Peak. Now I may have gotten the peak wrong, based on where it was positioned. English Peak is very, very prestigious. All these lakes usually have a very large peak that hovers behind them. If you've ever been in the Sierras, it's just a much easier way for a lake to form when it has low-laying areas at the base of the peak that fill with water. Wow. I see the lake, I think. I know. Some, there's a harsh wilderness. That's why Bigfoot's up in this region. No humans are going to get up in there. But this is day three of the expedition, 
And you know, I have to say, the first few years of us relocating out here in the high Sierras, first three, four years, was very abundant with Bigfoot activity, tracks and such. And I've noticed as the drought has gotten worse, global warming is occurring, we're... There's the lake, guys. Since global warming has occurred, it's it's gotten to a degree that it's they're being pushed so far back that we're not getting any evidence anymore. And that's all right. I, over the last three, four years, we've done impeccable research. And we've gotten tracks and sightings. We have a lot of data collected. But this past year has not been good to us. Ghost? A lot of ghost. UFOs? Yeah. It's not so much Sasquatch, but we'll still keep on looking. If you really love Sasquatch, then you'll put your heart and soul into it and never give up. Rocky, get over here. French Lake. Standing up on a rocky outcrop. It's a very hard to get to lake, which makes it a good area to seek out some Sasquatch tracks. If the shores are rocky, we won't be able to do it. But we'll we'll gamble. We'll give it a try. All right, guys, let's go. There, I can see the lake down there. It's right between the trees. You can see it. Mhm. Mm this is not going to be a very lengthy hike, guys. Maybe an hour or two, but we'll still check it out. We gotta. We gotta continue to hike, guys, until we reach the basin, because it'll climb down into the basin, which means that on our way out, we'll be going, we'll ascend upward. So right now, we're gonna be ascending downhill. Going uphill will be a little more challenging. You gotta climb out of these lake basins, and they're not easy to, not easy to maneuver. There's supposed to be petroglyphs somewhere here, guys. Nobody will say where they are, because they want to protect them, but they could be up in these rocks. Charlie, any trees on that mound? And it's full of rock. A lot of rock. I think I see English Peak back there as well. Oh yeah, I see English Peak. Be able to see it better when we get around the trees and head to the lake. Seen Old Man Mountain yesterday as well. It's a gorgeous looking mountain, but it's a beast. A lot of these mountains are beasts. People think, oh, it's not as high as the Himalayas. Yeah, you're right. It's not, however. Hey, come here, guys, for a second. A lot of people think, oh, the Mount Everest is a beast, and they're right, it is. But if you hike long enough in the Sierras, where these mountains are, you're going to start to realize some of these mountains cover many square miles. You can see the lake up here. Can you see it? See if we can get a nice view. Oh, yeah. No, I just want to see if I can see it. Yeah, can't see it. Not very well, though. Yeah, but not very well for a good picture up here. Man, this is a rock ape paradise here, isn't it? All right, let's go. I thought it would be better to see it, but you can't really see it through the trees. Woods are thick in certain areas, dense, very dense. Anything's worth a try when you're hiking and on expedition journey. Still good to explore. Like I said, these Bigfoot are being pushed so deep in areas you can't get to. They're not coming out near these less isolated lakes. It'd be it'd top off my day to get a track out here though. We'll try. We'll try to see what we can do.
These rock formations up here are amazing. Just steep walls along the side of this trail. You could just go off into the woods anywhere and explore here. And we tend to do that a lot. You could spend hours off the trail. That's where you find your tracks and such. It's a gamble. You go into the woods, the next few hundred feet might have a track. Or it might not. You're not wasting your time though. You can't beat the scenery and the nature. We'll continue our trek and our descent to French Lake. These rocks are killing, killing the feet. These are ankle sprainers right here. Ankle rollers. Beautiful morning in the Sierras. September 27th. Tonight's the night of the blood moon. I'll be definitely filming and taking some photography on the tripod to add to our website to go with this edition of Metal Lake. It's pretty exciting. It's well worth camping. You gotta camp here to see it all. You won't even see it all. You maybe see a sliver of things to come. That's a beautiful little hike. Kind of hard to find the trail here to get down to the lake. GPS marks my, the trail. Surprisingly, it don't mark anything, but in this case scenario, it marked the trail. A few twists and turns down the road, and we were here. You can see we're starting to descend, but it's rugged. There are no luxuries here. You're gonna walk on the stones, there's no easy area. And you're gonna slip on the stones and you're gonna climb fallen trees. It is what it is. But I'll tell you what, going down here to the lake, it's beautiful, it's nice. It's very primitive back here. That's where you find most of your Bigfoot activity and tracks, at the primitive zone. It's, people always wonder, why do you hike to all these lakes? Well, it's simple. Different shorelines have mud or swamp areas or wetlands, and they're prime areas for looking for tracks. The more lakes you go, the better chance you have of finding tracks. These creatures do got to drink. They do need water to sustain themselves. So those are the first places you check. The lakes. Oh yeah, I see French Lake. It's a long ways down still, but it's there. English Peak. And I'll try to keep on filming and taking photos for last day up here in Metal Lake area. I love this area and I chose the right area to camp and do an expedition, I really did. May have not got Bigfoot, but I'll tell you what, there's about five, six strange things that happened up here. Of course, the deer brains we've seen was probably from a hunter who came around the corner, it was guys loading up, I guess, a deer in the back of their truck. And that was down the road from where we, where the blood stains ended, right there. So what they did is they shot it and then they tracked it till it bled out. This is pretty rough in here. Rocky, come on, man. Rocky. Now the foliage is getting much thicker back in here as we drop down into the basin. We're gonna start coming across less rocks, more woods. This used to be an old Jeep trail. You couldn't possibly take this in today's times with fallen trees. You can't block me. You gotta let me pass eventually, right? 
Now this is getting pretty primitive back here. Overgrowing dry brush. If a lot of it's dry, it's almost fall. What am I saying? It is fall. It's going to be almost winter. This is the trail. Because it'll go all the way down and then it'll cut to the right. I have it on my GPS. Because they consider this a road, not a trail. But it's not a road. It's blocked off and you have no way of driving down here. So it is a trail. It's a French Lake Trail. There are multiple trails and ways down to the lake. You can rock climb all the way down if you want it. I just simply am running out of time today to do all the extra things I want to do. Or make it harder or more difficult. Not that this is not difficult. Like I said, this rock will tear your ankles apart. That's fun enough. But we're going down the French Lake. When we get there, we'll decide what we'll do next. It's a wonderful thing about these expeditions. You get to pick how you want them to go. Of course, you never know how they'll go. There's always a getting lost factor. Exploring and finding something new, which we've, we've done. Found a lot of things out here I would have never known exist. And you can't find on the web. But they're here. Like Sunny Acres Mining Camp. You're not going to find nothing on that place. And that place could date back to the 1800s. It's historic. And nobody really knows about it. I'm on the mines, Dad. Mining? Yeah. It's a pretty forest back here. This is the heart of Sasquatch country down in here. Going down in this deep basin. The thing about these creatures, you can get one sitting 10 feet off the trail. Up on some rocks watching and you'll never even know it. You're just not going to notice it unless you're really looking or you got some good eyes. This is bad, man. If this is labeled a road, then I'm the damn Pope because you can't even take a four-wheeler down this. It's not even wide enough how narrow it is. You can't take nothing down here except your feet and your legs. Creek? Is it a trail or what? Looks probably not. Well, I got some pictures of those flowers. There's not many flowers left. It's fall and going to be turning into winter soon. So you got to take what you can get. I found some purple flowers yesterday, some unique ones. And I was like, wow, it's about the only flowers left around here. We'll keep on. The primitive trail sometimes trails are dry or seasonal creek beds and you just follow those pretty cool i'm guessing nobody ever comes down this trail look how overgrown this is man there's even spider webs everywhere Yeah, no wonder why people get lost out here. And trail becomes overgrown and you lose it. What you looking for, Rocky? That's not French Lake over there. This must be French Lake. You want to do me a fav favor? Hold on. Everyone is aware, throughout this region, this area we're hiking at, there are dozens and dozens of small ponds and bodies of water. Good areas for, the water's not as fresh, but they're good areas to search for tracks. There's a lot of mud at these ponds, and we're about halfway to French Lake now. Let's see if we can see this pond, at least look at it. The lake's down in that basin below. That's what I thought, because I seen, I seen it up above. But these hidden lakes are good places to backpack in and maybe set up camp. It's just a part of the Tahoe National Forest, very few get to see. I need to look for tracks here. See the mud? I need to find tracks. 
We'll keep on pushing. The real Bigfoot investigators are here. These are real Bigfoot investigators. Oh, here we go. Look, there's a creek. Oh. Check that out. Here. I'm going to stand here on the rock. Yeah. You stand there and get my picture at the creek in the background. This is a hidden area. Not a lot of people know about this place. Look, Jackpot. Six. We found the tracks we're looking for. There's six toes on this one. Look. Perfect. You know, did you know that a lot of big in a lot of Bigfoot sightings they find six toes? Yeah. Something big came here and walked here. Yeah. You're not going to swim. This is stagnant water. Yeah. There's not going to be humans walking through this barefoot. Yeah. And it could that could be a barefoot right there. Yeah, but look how but there are six toes. toes. But those impressions are so Huge. deep, yeah, so deep. Whatever it was had weight These to are it. Fresh. All right, let me go ahead. We'll we'll take pictures. What we'll do is we'll take pictures, we'll go down there and look for some more, and we'll document each track for the website. Awesome, guys. I think, yeah, I had a feeling I got a couple more ponds like this yeah. on the way back. We'll search for tracks, but the ponds is where you find the tracks. Yeah. The ones that are hidden in the woods are the best. Look across the lake, or across. It seems like something's been coming here and drinking. And it could, like I said, it could be a bear, but... The one track is much larger than a barefoot that I found. My guess would be something, he'd have to go around, but my guess would be that something's been coming here and drinking. drinking. Very muddy. Compared to the other lakes that have rock, there's no rock here. It's all dirt. So let's see. We found multiple strange things, and to top off our final day on the expedition, we found some tracks. I'll measure them, I'll film them, I'll talk about them. This is your founder of the Paranormal Ghost Society, investigator, producer, author, talk show host, Angel of the Night Radio, Lord Rick. First track we found, you can see three, four, five, maybe six, but I see f what appears to be five toes. It's very odd shaped. I'm thinking this could be bear, but there are no visible claws. But you can see there's a pad here and a pad here. So I'm thinking maybe bear. Nobody knows for sure, you know. No, I'll go check it out. And we have another one, and you can tell on this one, you have two sets of toes. You have a set here and a set here, and then you have a slide mark, like it slid first, and then it turned its foot and made those toe impressions. I'll be right there, son. We found more fresh tracks over on the other side. Now, I can understand this side because it's accessible. But somebody came here and was somebody was barefoot. Whether it's bear, human, or Sasquatch, it's one of the three. However, there's a lot of different tracks here. And, they all seem to be made by something the same size. People forget, everybody thinks Bigfoot is just one of these creatures that has two foot long feet. They have like a size 15 foot, that is not the case. Many of the Sasquatch that are only seven, eight feet tall don't have much bigger foot than a human being. And if they're only, if it's a juvenile Sasquatch, let's say the Sasquatch is only about two years old, three years old, it's gonna have a human sized foot. Something was coming back here drinking and playing in the water. They like to play in the water. Something was here. Like I said, human, bear, or whatever, something was here. And they're deep, too. Perfect. Look at the width of that. You know, and look, the back of the heel is right here, and there's the front. Well, no, the back of the heel is right here. Look. Here's the toe. They're like this one, right there. Right, but here's the heel, and here's the toe. This yeah. is a whole track right here. Yeah, no. And look at the size. Look at the size of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the ridge. I don't understand the ridge. Me either. I mean, sometimes humans, when they press down, have that. But the, but the size of it tells another story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could tell. It's like, it's like it. 
when it stepped down it put some weight on the heel and then it arced a little forward and made the impression with the toes. Let's get this measured and logged. What we have here is a track of about 17 inches. And I, ha I cannot discount the heel impression. It's round right here. So we start, here's how we measure them. We start at the heel and we go all the way to the, where the dirt's pushed up where the tip of the toes are, toes are. Now if I brought the measuring stick over here, so we're saying about almost 17 inches, give or take. That's a big track. It's a big foot. And if you look at the toes, I'll tell you what gives it away is not being human. Humans have a big toe, and each toe gets a little smaller till you get to your pinky toe. And I know I'm not using scientific terms, but I'm using terms that you can understand instead of the scientific terms for every index, toe index. Point is, is that each toe, look, here's my fingers. Look how large these toes are. Every one of them is pudgy. Every toe is like a big toe. In other words, this is like having four or five big toes. And you can see them. They're all very large. Much larger. A human toe, human, the three human, four human toes are the size of my fingers. You see my fingers? These are like five big toes. This one then sink in as much. Like I said, the weight was... Something came up here. What it did is it walked from... There's caves and granite and cliffs... And it came down off of here through the grass. And instead of instead, and what's weird is if you look, there's no print, so it stepped from the grass to here. We're talking about this is a seven foot, six foot stride. To probably step down here and stepped right down. And that's why it sank. This is yours, and look how deep the print is. This is my print. Right here, ladies and gentlemen. I like make nothing, you see? Yeah. There's nothing there, and look how deep that is. Yeah, and this is kind of hard. Whatever that was, weighed probably twice as much as me yeah. to make that. I'll step down one more time just to kind of look. I'm putting all my weight just to show an example. Got to do the scientific test. There's my there's there's my impression right there. That little impression. That's what I made. It's not even a half an inch deep. And you look at this, where the toes are, it's about an inch down. So that tells you right there, if I'm 200 pounds, they had to be 400 pounds minimum. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. Once again, we find the dirt's pushed up. Humans really don't like getting mud between their toes. And you can see with this, all the dirt's been put, it was on the rock here, it's all been pushed forward. So whatever walks, walks puts a lot of weight into its toes, into the into the front of its foot, in other words. And then you come down here, and again, it's disfigured, but something sunk in deep. Something came to the edge of the stagnant water. It's not moving very much. Something was here. And you can clearly see the impressions. Stepped down on the rock and slipped a little in. Once again, toe impressions. This, this could be a beer here. It's possible. But you can see that whatever was here was heavy. It pushed all the foliage to the side. It overstepped on its tracks because you have some in the front and then toes. We have toes in the front, which were mildly pressed into the ground. And then you have some toes in the front. And this one's extremely deep. It just goes straight down. Like it stepped here and then stepped on the wood and went back into the more solid ground. There's definitely, there's definitely something in here. Something was here, no doubt. Jared found some stool. There's nuts in it. It's just a giant black clump. Could be beer. Usually beer stool is kind of bubbly, has a certain shape to it. This does not. But I still have to videotape it just to show you that there's, there is wildlife back in here. Bigfoot, bear, or some other mammal. You gotta always document everything that's important on these expeditions. So we're about to head to French Lake. We'll continue to head to French Lake. We're almost to the lake. I hear a creek. Is that a creek? I hear it rapids, man. 
cool. This is a very rewarding hike today. Into the woods. Makes sense that there would be Sasquatch back in here. It's very overgrown. There's a lot of water in the area. It can remain elusive. It's a plentiful food source. Oh, I see the lake. Straight ahead. Yesterday was amazing standing on the butte. Seeing four to five lakes on top of there. Just from left to right you could scan and see bodies of blue water and gorgeous peaks. It's my type of camping and hiking. It's very steep to get down in here. This is rock ape country here. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a good sized lake. All these have dams. They turned them into reservoirs. Some were man-made, others were smaller lakes and they expanded them with the dam. Well, cool, we're almost to French Lake. Peace out. Some gorgeous country up here. Cliffs, bluffs, buttes, mountains. Trail's not as overgrown here as we were at. Yeah, I'm pretty skeptical about most of the tracks I found today, but the one track that's 17 inches with the heel and the mass of toes, yeah, it's, that's something definitely to document and monitor. French Lake, it's not too far away. Back into the woods again. Wow, this is crazy. Need to be really careful. A lot of boulders and rocks down here. This is the entire descent. We have to climb up this and ascend out of here as well. See what happens. We're almost down to the lake. Look at that. It's a pretty good sized lake. And about a half more mile to go. We'll be standing on its prist oh, pristine shores. That hurt. Wow. I decided instead of taking that rocky trail down, which we're going to shave some time off by going down here. Shortcuts are ill advised, but it can be done if you know how to do them right. It's our final descent down to the bottom of the left to the lake we're gonna go where that muddy area is and kind of work off that it's French Lake and that my friends is English Peak what a beast we have to figure a way to get off these cliffs and down here it's like an obstacle course We'll continue to make our descent down. Whichever way is the safest without us breaking our necks, right? People people take selfies all the time and they I was reading they break their necks. Death by selfie. Is it busy? Taking pictures. Not paying attention to where they're hiking. Alright, I gotta maneuver. Lights off. Camera's off. Going through this thick brush. Try to find a way out of here. We're heading down into some ravine now. Almost to the lake. But the other ways were cliffs. So we're kind of forced to have to take this way through the brush. One might consider this a seasonal creek where the water flows down and goes right into the lake. Most lakes are fed by two to three seasonal creeks. Some have creeks that are active all year round. Without those, these reservoirs would run dry. Wow, 
A lot of rock climbing going on today. We already found Bigfoot track, so we're good for the day. If we find anything extra, it's a perk. How's that dog even making it? <laughs> well, it's intense, it's brutal. This wash or ravine, climbing rocks for a few hundred feet, yeah. Might you go swimming? No. Oh boy. Yeah, we're here. I don't know how we're gonna get down. Well, we'll climb. Climbing down off the cliffs of the basement. Come on, Rocky. Did he? It's Catahoula, that's what they do. French Lake. We've made it, folks. Short as a French Lake. We came all the way at the top of that, over near the top, and climbed all the way down. It's up to you. Here's a shady area. Look. Huh? Oh, a duck. Yeah. Finally one that's in the water, not flying, right? Yep. Needs a drink. Search for search for some tracks. That's English Peak. This is French Lake. Thousand foot cliffs up ahead of us. A lot of tree stumps. I assume that they cut the trees and then made this into a reservoir. This is an island straight ahead. You could swim out there and explore it. Too rocky of a shore. There's only a little mud or sand over here, and I'll look for prints, but there isn't really an area we can check for prints. Look at all the rocks. And the water's low. It should be coming up to those dead trees. It's really low. But we're here. We're going to break, eat a little something, and we'll begin our trek back to our camp. This is Lord Rick. Check out our site, www.paranormalghostsociety.org. We found some Bigfoot tracks possibly up here. Nice 17 incher. It's very remote here, so you could see why. We're at French Lake. We're breaking. We're eating some food. There is nobody up here. It's one of the most secluded lakes in the Sierras. It's pretty hard to get to. It's not like you can take roads access to some of these lakes. No place has more Bigfoot sightings. Or strangeness in the Tahoe National Forest and it's hard to believe this is part of the Tahoe National Forest but it is it truly is it's a different part of the Tahoe National Forest and Lake Tahoe area people haven't really seen we're not even close to Lake Tahoe but it just gives you an idea we're about 30 40 miles north of in it's such a large area this is, it's God's country What are you feeding the squatch? Yeah. <laughs> Good. I want you to feed the squatch. Let me climb in and out of this beast. We got, we're got. we going to go around the lake and go all the way up to the top where that peak is and then just go around and work our way back to the Jeep. This is the ascension up. Look at that. Layers of mountains and granite slabs to climb. Let's do this. We're out of here. Bye-bye, French Lake. Still ascending out of the lake basin. Check us out, www.paranormalghostsociety.org. Somewhere on these cliffs, these rock formations, contains about 1,500-year-old petroglyphs, the Marches Native Americans who lived here on these lands for almost 2,000 years.